So in this MATLAB script, what we're doing is we are setting up a, what I call a continuous time in sinusoid. Now it's not really continuous time because anything that you do in MATLAB is going to be discrete. But what we're doing is we're setting up a sinusoid that has been oversampled quite a bit. So if you actually plot it, it looks like a continuous time sinusoid. So just as an example, here's a sinusoid plotted from time equals zero to five. It is sampled at a rate of two and I'm sorry, this is what we're going to sample it at. For this one, I'm actually plotting it every um, 0.1 millisecond. So I'm sampling it very, very quickly. And it has a frequency of just one hertz. So it does one cycle per second. So there's one cycle. There's another full cycle, another full cycle. So it's very much oversampled. If I was to sample this, what I call, quote, continuous time sinusoid at a rate of two, and I would only have two samples per second, and that's what these dots indicate. There's a sample here, a sample here, a sample here, so I'm only sampling it two times per second. And then this right here is the solving for the alias frequency, if there is an alias frequency. So at this point, we've plotted this, quote, continuous time of sinusoid in blue. We have sampled it using the black dots at some rate, and then we've tried to figure out if aliasing is occurring or not. So in this first example, no aliasing is occurring because we're sampling at exactly the Nyquist rate. The frequency of the sinusoid is one. We're sampling the black dots at a sampling rate of two samples per second, which is exactly the Nyquist rate, so no aliasing is occurring. Now, if I was to bump up this frequency a little bit of the underlying sinusoid and run this again, you can see what happens. Now we have a blue sinusoid that's a little bit faster. It is at 1.3 hertz, so it actually completes a cycle a little bit more often than once per second. We used to complete a full cycle and stop at one. Now we're completing a full cycle just a little bit earlier and stopping a little short of one. So when I sample this sinusoid at the same rate of two per second, here's the black dots, I have a black dot there, black dot here, here, here. If I was to fill these in smoothly, we would see that this actually gives us a different looking sinusoid. The red curve here actually looks like a sinusoid whose frequency is 0.7 hertz. So aliasing has occurred. And we can try different values of this on this again. So now I'm having an alias frequency of 0.3 hertz. The red curve, which smoothly connects these black samples looks like a much slower sinusoid than our original two, um, I'm sorry, our original 1.7 hertz sinusoid. But what we know what we can do, we can bump up the sampling frequency. Right now my sinusoid is 1.7 hertz. I know if I go to 3.4, that's exactly Nyquist, and I'll be fine again. Or I could go higher than that if I wanted to, right? I could go to 6.4, and now I'm sampling very often, 16.4 where the sample values uniquely determine the underlying signal. But if I was to back down too low, 3.1 maybe, then I'm back into trouble again and aliasing has occurred. So that's what this top part of the script is doing. How am I figuring out what the alias frequency in? Well, that's what this part of the code is doing. And this just goes back to the equation we had a little bit ago that we saw for to solve for the alias frequency, how you solve for that alias frequency. So that's what I'm doing in this while loop. I'm figuring out the value for m that makes the equation solvable. And once I figure out what that alias frequency is, then I'm actually constructing a cosine of that frequency and plotting that cosine on top of the other cosine and the other samples. So it looks something like this. So this is a good little script to play around with to get a feel for how um, sampling and aliasing and all this works. So this one can be very undersampled, right? It's a much faster sinusoid. I'm still only sampling at 3.1. So Nyquist for this would be 6. So if I went up to, say, 5.8, I'm still going to be aliased. And if I actually got up to, say, 7, I will no longer be aliased. So this is a good little script to play around to make with to make sure that you understand what aliasing is, what it means, and how you go about computing alias frequencies.